Hello, everyone. My name is Tiff, and I am the Behavior Manager at the Humane Society of Western Montana, and I'm also a certified professional dog trainer. Welcome back or welcome to our free live streams, which we have every Wednesday and Thursday at six o'clock. And um, if you haven't seen the message, we're still gonna hold them through the winter. I imagine at least till the end of March, but we're just gonna switch the days. So our puppy class is going to be Thursdays at six o'clock starting next week. And our behavior spotlights like tonight's um, type of class will be at Wednesdays at six o'clock. So we hope to continue seeing you there. Tonight's topic is one of my favorites. We're going to talk about nose work and scent games. So I call it nose work and scent games because there is a formal competition sport for dogs called nose work. And I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. But scent games is just a very general term. And I want to show you a bunch of different ways where you can get your dog using their brain and using their nose, regardless if they are food motivated or toy motivated, if they love fetch or tug. Um, if you're simply looking for something fun to do, or if you're thinking about doing competitive or serious things like having your dog search for antlers or competing um, in nose work trials. Now, we're not going to go in depth into uh, the competition or antler finding, but the tips I'm going to give you will absolutely apply and give you a good head start. So as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section and I will try my best to address them. And at the end of this, we always post a little information card so that you can continue asking us questions, regardless if you have a question about today's topic or any other behavior or training topic. So joining us is my puppy, Paya, who is bringing me her little bear. Thank you, Paya. And I have the space set up today to do uh, scent games. You can see that my space is not big at all. So Big, first thing I want to tell you guys is no matter how big or small your space is, you can play a version of these games. And we're going to start with the easiest, most versatile, and then we're going to go into the more specific exercises. Okay, so the easiest, most versatile way to get your dog using your nose is to have them hunt for your kibble by doing a kibble hunt. And to do this, I'm going to show you how you're going to start off to start teaching your dog this exercise. All you need to do is get your dog's kibble. So I'm literally using her dinner right now. And it's super cold outside, as you guys might know if you're in the Missoula area. So it's a great way to get her moving and thinking and tired without needing to go on a really long walk. Though I did walk her this morning. So um, when we start teaching our dogs any new thing, the important thing is to remember, we're not getting them searching with their noses yet. That comes just a little later and oh, lost sound when I move the camera. Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> I feel like this is a theme. Give me one moment. I'm sorry that this happens all the time. So I am using the speaker today and I am, uh, it is facing me and it should capture sound in the whole room. So hopefully this is resolved. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, but I'm watching the comment section. Thank you guys so much as always for helping me with these technical difficulties. So the, the thing with teaching any new skill is, you know, let's imagine our dogs looking for food or whatever. Um, Okay, and uh, we envision them sniffing for something out of sight, right? And that is the end goal, but we can't start there because our dogs don't know the game yet and we don't want them to be confused. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a leash on our dogs. Alrighty, yeah, you ready? Good. The reason why we wanna put a leash on them is we don't wanna hide the kibble yet, we do want to put it out of reach and have them just pause and think for a moment. That's how we're going to teach them the search cue. Okay, so here's an example. Um, I'm just going to have Haya on leash and I'm just going to hold it short enough that when I throw this about five feet away, she cannot reach it. I'm not going to yank her back. I'm not going to tell her no or anything. I'm just going to hold her back. So I'm just going to throw maybe three pieces of kibble out of reach. And then I'm just gonna give her the search cue, kibble, and let her go get it. I've literally never used that word with her before. So at this stage of training, I am teaching her what the cue means. The cue, oh, thank you for that. The cue kibble means 
expect that there's food on the floor and then go get it. Oh, what's that? There's a rainbow. That's Bray's toy. It's gonna be so jealous. Good. All right. So I'm gonna do that again. And if you have a dog at home, you can absolutely join it. I'm just gonna gently hold that leash short, throw maybe three pieces of kibble out of reach. If your dog is struggling to get it, just stand here patiently and wait for them to stop struggling. Kibble. Then you're just gonna say whatever word you want. You can use search, you can say find it. You can, I'm just choosing kibble because it's not a word she knows yet. And then you just drop the leash and let your dog go get the food. All right, um, I also wanna say that everything I'm showing you is done in stages. So I don't expect even my dog to understand the concept of searching in difficult ways at the end of this quick little live stream, but I am gonna show you the steps and fast forward so that as you practice with your dog over the next few days or even weeks, you know how to progress with them. Um, this first game that we're doing, they're actually gonna pick it up very, very quickly. So let's do this one more time and then I'm gonna talk you through what the next step looks like. Ready, Paya? So I'm going to hold that leash, though if your dog knows a weight, you can also forego the leash and have them wait, then put the thing out of reach, kibble, and then give them that search cue. All right, um, she's, uh, you can see she's really good at the weight, but just, you know, she's still a puppy, so I'd rather just have a leash on her for extra security right now. Not security, um, assurance that she can't get it even if she tried without permission. Anyways. Um, so we're establishing that when they hear the word kibble, that's the search word, there should be food on the ground for them to find. Maybe you can sense where I'm going with this. As you repeat this repetition after repetition, you're going to have the food be farther because your dog is already going to expect to find it. And at some point, you're actually going to be able to hide it so that your dog can use their nose and their brains to find it. Here's an example of me throwing it a little farther away. So whether I'm just holding my dog back or having them wait, I'm just going to throw it a little further this time. Kibble. Awesome. And I'm going to do another example where I throw maybe two pieces, two to three pieces in a different direction. What I'm demonstrating right now is just making it a little harder, not much harder, just a little harder so that as my dog keeps practicing, he's going to naturally learn to search in wider areas and in more complex ways. So I'm just holding the leash. I'm gonna throw one here, one closer, and one farther. Kibble. Did you see how she had to think about, she looked at me because she doesn't know what the Q means, what the Q is yet. We're learning. Uh, it along the way. Look at how she's still searching the room. I don't know if she sounded all, which give, brings me to the next point. Um, even if your dog doesn't find every single piece, do not help them out. So do not, you know, do the whole, like, let's say she's searching, oh, hey, you missed the piece right here. That's very nice of you, but the more you help your dog out, the less they're going to actually search on their own. What they're going to learn if you help them out is just to give up and just to sit and look at you until you help them out. Now you're gonna be doing the nose work instead of them. Um, if your dog, I mean, as understandably, we don't wanna leave food lying all over the place. One is I can almost bet your dog is, <clears throat> your dog is gonna find the food at some point if this is a central area that they're allowed in. But two is you can just easily sweep up at the end of this activity if they truly are leaving a lot of pieces. So I'm gonna do one more version, one more demo of me scattering a few pieces and just watch how she searches a wider area now. Ready, Paya? And she's still searching. I love that. I love that. Every step she takes searching the room appropriately for food is one less step I have to take on a walk with her tonight, right? Okay, so I have just, I'm gonna take maybe five pieces this time, gonna up the ante, and I'm gonna scatter it. So I'm just gonna, well, I'm gonna do a scatter here and a scatter over there it's in that area. Kibble. And off she goes. When your dog gets really good at this, and depending on how big your household is, think about all the places you can put it, right? You can put one on their bed, you can put them next to the uh, table leg, you can put it one on the other side of the room, and you're gonna have them just independently do this activity while you just sit down 
and relax. That's my favorite part about this. Listen to a podcast, right? Um, of course, never hide things in areas where you don't want your dog to go. So I would never put food on the kitchen table or on the couch for her to find. That's just not, is not what I want her to learn. Okay, so as always, I'm watching the comments. If you have questions, let me know, but I don't see any questions so far. So that first, this first game that we played is just the easiest version, just teaching your dog to find their food. And I showed you how you start off by teaching the cue and how you can gradually make it harder and harder for your dog. Um, I also wanna show one more step actually before we move on, which is when your dog gets really, really good, what you can do. She's actually, this is literally the first time I've done this with her. So she's not gonna know how to do this final step yet. But as an example, if your dog, um, you can do an extended stay if your dog is good at that, or just put him in a different room briefly. So I'm gonna just trade her Good girl. So I'm just gonna close that real quick. If your dog is an expert, you can just drape it so they can't see you, but she doesn't even know what I'm doing right now. So I can show you how, when your dog gets really good at this, you know, you can hide a piece of kibble here. You can put one over here. I'm gonna put one um, in her calm, right? In her calm right here. Just now I'm gonna put one uh, in the crook of this little bear's arm. I'm gonna put some kibble the corner of her bed and I can get as creative as I want to get with this and then when I'm done I can open the crate and say kibble and then she goes on her search wow she might actually be picking up on this <laughs> I don't expect her to find it all because I've never taught her this before but um an example of how complicated you can make this all right so kibble hunt, the easiest thing you can do. You're using your dog's calories and you're just making them work for it. Notice how she gave up, she didn't find it all uh, because I made it too hard too fast, right? I just wanna show you how you can make it harder the better your dog gets. But onwards we go. Uh, I wanna address a different version of this you can play with your dog if they are very toy motivated. So if your dog loves to fetch or play tug, and um, what you're gonna do, what you can do is you can teach them to find a very specific toy. So I'm gonna use this teddy bear as an example. All right, so you're gonna see a very similar theme for all the exercises we do. And the big theme is to start off easy. Okay, so I, you always, you wanna teach them the cue first, right? If I just hid this right now and said, where's her bear? She's gonna look at me like I'm crazy because she doesn't know what I'm talking about. I wanna teach her that when I say bear, or where's your bear, or where's your teddy, whatever cue I want to teach her, that the thing that I'm looking for is already right in front of her. I want to set her up to already have the answer right in front of her. If you make any of these games too hard too fast, your dog's only going to give up and they're gonna to learn to give up faster. So we don't want that to happen. All right, so I'm gonna put her on leash again. Can you find something? Girl. Okay. Um, if your dog loves a toy, you want to pick an exciting toy. Like if they, this is a toy she doesn't care about. I don't want to use that toy. Um, you can use a food toy, like a Kong. If your dog is really amped about the Kong, or maybe have a special ball or tug toy that you only save for this game. That's what's going to make them really motivated to go to the object. All right. So. Um, and that said, I'm gonna follow my own advice. I, I love that she loves this bear, like she loves it, but it has been on her the floor all day, like in her pen. So I'm gonna pick a more novel toy for her. All right, I'm gonna pick this toy. This is a toy she hasn't had in a week. So I think she's gonna be really excited about it. Did your butt smell funny? What's going on back there? All right, love the short attention span sometimes. Okay, I'm just trying to untangle her. There we go. Okay, so the cool thing is this starts out the exact same way. I'm just gonna hold her back a little bit just so she can see it be on the ground and think about it. And I'm gonna put this thing out of reach, but very close by, because I want her to succeed. Then I'm gonna think about what cue I wanna give her. Paya, where's the rope? Free. Good girl. And if she likes tug, I'm going to start tugging with her. She was waiting for a release cue. But because I said rope before she went to the rope, she's eventually going to learn 
that when she hears the word robe, it means, oh, go to this thing. Something's very interesting about her butt. Maybe I need to take a look at it. You want to show everyone a live stream? It looks fine. Puppies and butts. Who knows what is so interesting about that? Where's your butt? Good girl. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do this again. Just going to put it somewhere out of reach, but very plainly in sight. Where's your rope? Good girl. Yay. There it is. And then you can play tug with them as a reward. So they're going to really learn to the cue of this object because they want the reward of finding it so that you can play with them with it. Oh, you got it. You got that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do a version with a ball if your dog is fetch motivated instead. All right, so um, same thing. We always start the same way because we want to teach them the cue first. We want to teach her that when I say, where's your ball, that the object I'm referring to with that sound that I'm making is the thing that's right in front of her. And then when she gets to it, I'm going to reward her with a game of fetch. So I'm just going to hold her on leash, just put it right out of reach. Balls are tricky because they roll away. Where's the ball? There it is. Yay. And a lot of dogs who love fetch are natural retrievers anyways. Do you want to bring it? Good. I cover how to teach your dog to retrieve in another, um, in another free live stream that you can easily find on Facebook. And then you can reward them. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Good. And then I'm going to do it again. So I'm just going to hold this a little short. I'm going to move back. And, or if your dog knows a really good stay, oh, she found the kibble that's in the cup. I'm just going to help her out. Oh, there's canned food in there. Ready, Paya? All right, I'm going to take it away for now. Ready? Wait. Where's the ball? Good girl, you found it. And then as a reward, we play tug because tugs are really her thing. Yeah. Ready? Or fetch. Yeah. So she's going to tie the cue ball with this object. And then over time, I can hide it in farther and farther places. I actually haven't done this with her yet either. I've just been focusing on the retrieve. Oh, get it. So let's test her a little bit. I'm pushing things. Let's see if she can find this object really quickly. But I just want to show you how I'm going to increase the difficulty a little bit. I'm not just going to go hide it under the couch right now. Wait. So it's in sight, just farther away. Where's the ball? Yay, you got it. Good girl. And then as you can imagine, with more practice, I can actually start hiding it maybe behind the bed or um, in a different room, that's a much later step, but you can, I hope you can see where this is going. Okay, I don't see any questions yet, so we're going to move on. I just talked about a different version of teaching your dog to find things, which is if they're toy motivated, you can use their favorite toy or play style like fetch or tug to teach them to find specific toys by name. Um, I, so this one, you might be thinking, well, how are they using their nose for this? Well, at first they're using their sight because we're starting easy, but when you get to actually hiding it because they're going to learn the names of these toys, then they're going to start using their noses to find a toy, which is really, really cool to see. All right. Um, I'm going to show you another fun version, and this will teach your dog to find an object if they're not toy motivated but they're food motivated. And it's just a little more complex than the kibble hunt. And if you don't like crumbs on your floor, this is the one for you. So you're gonna take a dog safe container. I have a pill bottle. You wanna take something your dog can't swallow or easily rip up. And if your dog has a problem with relinquishing objects, you don't wanna do this version. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna poke some holes in it and you're gonna put a few pieces of their kibble in the thing. And guess what? It starts the exact same way. Let's call this jar just for the sake of using a new word today. All right. So I'm just going to have her on a short leash just so I can put it out of reach. 
Where's the jar? There it is. And dogs who aren't toy motivated don't have a natural retreat, but the moment they go to it, praise them and open the thing and pour the food out for them. What they're gonna learn really fast is, oh, this is a food thing, but they're also gonna learn I can't open it myself and your dog can actually learn to bring it to you to, for you to open it for them. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm just gonna hold her on leash. In sight, right? I threw it on her bed, but it's like four feet away. Where's the jar? There it is, yay! So she went to it and the moment she goes to it, I'm gonna pick it up and open the cap and she missed it, but I poured the kibble out for her. Similar to all the other versions, as your dog gets good at this, you can make it harder by increasing the distance that the object is from your dog and you can slowly start putting it out of sight. But she is just doing this for the first time today. So I don't wanna make it too hard for her. At the end of this, if we have time, I'll show you a demo with my adult dog who is pretty advanced at nose work and I'll show you what it can look like in a, in a very advanced version. Wanna do one more? Yay. Wait. Where's the jar? There it is. And I think she can retrieve it. Ready? Bring it. Oh, maybe not. I've never shown her that object before, so she hasn't generalized the retrieve yet. She's actually being a little funny with it. All right. Can you take that? All right, you got it. <laughs> so anyways, I can teach her to retrieve it just by doing this game a little bit more. So this jar version is a really accessible version um, and just a little more technical than just scattering kibble, but it uh, it is very, um, it's, what am I trying to say? It's fun because they're still searching for their food that they get every day, but you can also teach them a very specific object indication or retrieve in a very casual, accessible way. All right, so great question. Um, how can I train my dog to stay at or alert to a scent? And this is a great segue. It's almost like this person works at the shelter and is giving me a little transition statement or something like that. But I'm gonna talk about the more formal um, scent exercises people do with their dogs. And there are, so, so the competitive version is nose work, right? Nose work, depending on if you live in Canada or the United States, there are official odors. And the states, the odors are birch, clove, and anise. And not clove and anise like in your kitchen drawer, it's a specific species of the plant and it's an essential oil. And if you're interested, you can go to um, a website whose name I don't have, just search canine nose work and I'm sure you can find it. They're making you the exact names of the essential oils used in competitive nose work. I am not a competitive household for many reasons, but I do love teaching sports just for fun and mental stimulation for me and my dog. So as an example, um, one, I'm already doing things wrong. Uh, nose work elitists, not even elitists, but people who really seriously compete, much respect to them. They will t really just scold me for a few things I'm doing right now, like touching the odor directly with my hands. Oh, she's onto it. Um, and not storing my odor in a place that's really far removed from my dog, like in a different room or in a freezer or something. But anyways, I'm not competitive. So I really don't care about those things. Um, it is true that like, let's say these three Q-tips have different odors on them. One has birch, one has clove, one has anise. Um, and what am I trying to say? Yes, I can mess things up a little bit if I get it on my hands and now I'm touching the couch and now the essential oil is in the couch things like that. But what I'm going to do, hmm, actually, I probably shouldn't have picked it up. I could have shown you like this. Eh, maybe I'll wipe it on my clothes and launder them or something. But <laughs> what I'm going to do is I have this lid with holes in it. I don't know if you can see this lid has holes punched in and this lid does not. And so I store it in with the lid that is not porous. And yes, I can put it in the freezer or something if I don't want the odor in my house. But now she could smell the essential oils through the holes. So here is the big difference with nose work and everything else I just showed you. Everything else I just showed you is very kind of 
informal in that I don't care how your dog interacts with the object. They eat the kibble, they pick up the toy, they paw it around. Whereas for nose work, what the dog shouldn't do is mess with the source. So that you want them to tell you, aha, I found it, but not eat this or shake it with their heads or anything like that. So um, I'm gonna show you how, there are so many ways to start nose work training. There is no one correct way to teach it. But I, for the sake of consistency, I'm going to show you a version of teaching it that starts the same way we started the other scent exercises, but I'm going to show you the key difference in training nose work as well. Right, Paya? All right. So I'm going to hold her on leash. Just want to make sure you can see this. And I'm going to put the odor thing down, the tin down. And I'm gonna give her her cue. And even that, some nose work people don't even start by adding the cue. But as an example, I'm gonna add the cue. And most dogs, even if she hasn't learned this before, they're gonna go explore the new thing. But here's the big difference. I'm gonna be ready to reward her on the source, not over here, um, not throwing treats at her like I did before. I need to make sure the reward happens at the source. Hiya, chat. Good. I punched her in the head, I was so ready. Good, good. You can just put the kibble right on the tin or whatever your container is. So what this teaches is it eventually teaches your dog to stay at the source rather than just like sniff it and then come to you, right? I don't wanna do this, good, and reward her here because she's just gonna to learn to dance around. And if you compete, you don't, you, you literally cannot see where the people have hidden the source. It's like a tiny little thing hidden under a car bumper or something like that. Good. So you want your dog to put their nose good on it. Good. Good. Um, uh, you want them to keep, I, they don't necessarily need to put their nose on it. Some dogs sit to indicate, some dogs bark, some dogs bow. But whatever it is, you want to start by rewarding them at the source so they at least learn a duration behavior, staying here rather than dancing around. Them. Good. All right. Awesome. However, the cool thing about all of this is it progresses in kind of the same way as all of the other scent exercises. Um, yet, I, what I'm teaching is when you hear the search cue, I use track for her she should expect to find a reward if she goes to this smell. And that's really not different than finding kibble or finding a toy. It's just more official, so to speak. So I'm gonna do it again. I mean, she, we have worked a lot on this um, in a pretty informal capacity. Get, get the leash untangled. Um, and so she's gonna behave differently compared to a dog who doesn't know it but truly you can pick whatever word you want. So I'm not gonna put it far away. You don't start by putting it too far. Okay, good. And just be ready to give them the treat right when they get to the thing and feed as close to the thing as possible. Notice I'm feeding multiple times too. All right, three. Okay, so where she's at in this training is you can see she kind of is busy with this and that's just my fault for using such a movable object, right? But like I said, I'm not competitive, so I don't really care about the nitty gritty details. I just do this for fun. Um, what I, I'm gonna do a quick demo and then I'll show you how to do it with antlers. And then if we have time, she's trying to find, like, yeah, she thinks there's something up there. Um, I'll show you kind of where my adult dog is too. So because she knows this game, I'm actually going to crate her and hide it for real, but not make it too hard for her. All right, ready? Yeah. Good girl. And I mean, I can drape it, but really she's not good enough at this yet that she will actually understand that I hit it here. So do you see I'm putting this um, odor tin underneath her bed, it's slightly sticking out. Sometimes I trick my dogs by pretending to put things in somewhere else, you know, but I don't think she is that good yet. We'll see, this is a test. Track. I don't know if you can hear, but I can hear her sniffing, which is really cool. So I love that. She actually um, 
did a really lovely indication there. Wow, she made me look really good, huh? It's like you knew I was live streaming. She did a great job. Yeah. All right. So just going to show you um, that, I guess, she's more advanced than I thought. Um, in the more advanced version, you can truly start to hide it, and your dog can learn to indicate. It took, this is way more technical than just teaching a kibble hunt. I truly believe that your dog can get the same level of mental stimulation from doing a kibble hunt or a toy hunt. Um, compared to formal nose work because it's still operating on the same instincts of them using their sense of smell in this very constructive way. Okay, I'm going to show you one more version, which is antlers. And this is where I like to do this last because um, it, there's so much freedom of choice for you as the owner to decide what you want your dog to do. So you can approach this the same way as teaching your dog to find kibble or find a toy and that you can be a little loose about whether to hold it with their mouths or bring it to you, or you can treat it like nose work where you don't want them to touch it with their teeth and you just want them to um, be at the source and indicate for you. So I'll show you both versions. And by now, this should look really familiar to you guys. I'm gonna put her on leash. I know you want to know that, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna put her on leash and I'm gonna put the thing I want her to find just out of reach, but in plain sight. Antler, good. So if I'm going the other the way of just treating this like finding a toy, I'm just gonna praise and reward her when she lands on the object and she's gonna learn, ah, I better find these things because my person gets really happy. And actually, antler hunting is a little different from all of the rest of the things I just said, because when you're in the woods with your dog, you don't necessarily want to say antler, antler, antler every 10 steps. You just want your dog to indicate when they found an antler. So what really you can do is just focus on the reward part. Good girl, you found that antler, huh? And whether you want them to retrieve it, whether you want to play with it with them, yeah, I just wanted to get them really excited about it. Or you can take a more nose work approach, formal nose work approach, get it, and just reward your dog every time they land close to an antler, good, so that they eventually learn to just sit next to one if they find one in the woods, good, good, just like that. Or you can do the retrieve route, what's that, what's that, good. And then maybe if I do this enough, she might think one day when she finds an antler in the woods, oh, I know the smell. Every time I bring this smelling thing to my person, they get really happy and they give me good things. So again, with teaching your dog to find an antler, it's very flexible and it all depends on what your criteria are. Do you want your dog to eventually maybe sit next to one or touch it with their nose or bring it into your hand? And all the games that we worked on up till this point give you a lot of different options on how to develop that skill. Um, and it all starts the same way. The, the big themes to any nose work or scent work game are one, start with your dog on leash so that they can see you plant the thing. That way you can teach them the cue, whether it's find your bear or kibble or track the scent. And they want to pair that word with the thing that is right in front of them. You know, it's point A to point B. They cannot get it wrong if you set it up that easily. And as they get better and better, you can move the thing farther and farther and farther until it is out of sight completely. Yeah, she's doing such a great job. Um, I haven't completed this because morel hunting season is so uh, small, but I am teaching my older dog to hunt for morels. And I'm approaching that the same way I showed you with the nose work tins, because I don't want my dog picking up the morels, <laughs> mushrooms with his teeth. So. It's the same thing. I got a morel from the good food store. I put it in a container, poked holes in it. And I said, morel. And then when he went to the morel, I rewarded him at the source and I removed the source as if I'm picking up the mushroom. So all of these games, they're fun for inside the house and they're functional too, if you want to develop them in more um, technical ways like this. Okay. Great question about, do you think a dog can distinguish between an antler attached and a shed? Um, will this teach them to chase deer? 
No, this will not teach them to chase deer. That is a really great question. No more than playing with a rubber toy will teach your dog to chew on rubber trees. Um, but great question about, you know, how fresh an antler is essentially. Honestly, I'm not really sure about that because I don't formally do antler hunting with my dog. I do think that they can learn just by the antlers we buy from the pet stores because that's literally an antler. But also in a sporting goods stores, you often find antler scent, like a little droplet you can put on to a fake rubber antler. Um, I'm not the expert on this, but I personally don't see it necessary to go that route. But if you get more technical with this, anyone reading or watching this, um, give it a try and let me know how it goes. The thing about antler hunting too is dogs naturally like antlers. So whether people are professional trainers or not, I think if their dog has a natural, um, uh, what do you call it, desire to chew on antlers, they're gonna be really good at finding them in the woods anyway. It's like, imagine if we wanted our dogs to find rotting deer carcasses for our collections. I think they'd, all of our dogs right now <laughs> would be the best at finding those for us. Okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up that information card. So if there are any questions, whether it's fun training or if you're having a behavior problem, we are here to help. So here we are. Um, the best way to contact us is you can call the shelter at any time. You can also email behavior at myhswm.org. We have a behavior team member on staff seven days of the week. So we are always happy to help you out. Uh, as I discussed, we're just switching the days of our puppy class and behavior spotlights, but it's still going to be Wednesdays and Thursdays at six o'clock through the winter. We are so thrilled to be offering these fun programs for free because I know it's been a crazy year and this year is still crazy so far. We wanna do our best to help the community. But if you are feeling generous, feel free to make a donation. Every cent you donate goes to the care of our shelter pets. But regardless, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you have a really great evening and we hope to see you at next week's live stream.